hello everyone and thank you to be here. First of all, I would like to, to thank the organization uh, for the possibility to, to be here today. Uh, I know it's not the same as being in Vegas, but it's a certain honor uh, for me to be able to participate in this new modality of DEF CON. Uh, an online modality. So uh, before starting I would like to clarify that the purpose of this uh, presentation is to show how simple it can be to maintain access to an organization during an intrusion, okay, a real intrusion or a simulation like a red team exercise. But it's true that I'm not going to focus on each technique, uh, on the technical part, because well, many of the techniques are simple and, well, have been exposed several times in public documents and presentations like this, okay? So let's start with the presentation and see how we can organize our infrastructure. Okay, um, about me, a uh, really simple overview. Um, about who am I? I'm Eduardo Arriolos. I'm the co-founder of the cybersecurity startup here in, in Spain, call it Root Pointer, where, where we are working on the development of different products that help organizations uh, to improve and be reactive against target attacks. Uh, at the same time, I work at different universities here in Spain uh, and well, mainly in the Utah University. Um, more about me, well, uh, for more than eight years, I've been dedicated uh, on the world of cybersecurity and concretely on hacking. And the last five years, uh, I work as a manager of different red team services, uh, where well, the only job was to develop real attack simulations on large-scale companies uh, here in Spain and internationally. So, uh, during these simulations and after not being detected, uh, we normally force um, the development of tests to measure the detection and response capabilities where we observe the true capability of dealing um, with the target attack. Okay, and because of that, I have seen very similar actions between companies, and one of them is the lack of knowledge on how to act um, when they detect an attacker, okay, and mainly how to do it. So, it is very common to find blue teams that detect users, computers, and block them, and think that they have already kicked the attacker out. But the truth is, is completely different, okay? If an actor has managed uh, to gain high privilege, like administration privilege, for example, in the domain or in the network, it is trivial that he can continue accessing as we will be here, I will see here in this presentation, okay? So, can, okay, perfect. Table of contents. Here, um, as I suppose you know that the title of the talks refers to the movie of the same title because it is a pure reality for me of an intuition when an infrastructure of persistence exists well deployed. Okay, If we do the things okay, it's really difficult for the blue team to uh, detect us. So we will see um, mainly four parts. Uh, the first one is the introduction, where we will see the basic concepts about persistence, what is persistent, why we need to deploy it, uh, where, when, and so on. The second point, uh, the second point is about traditional persistence. I mean, the persistent in a traditional way or traditional approach, you know, uh, like how can we deploy persistent on the internal servers, workstation, and so on, okay? So this point is a basic uh, overview of the main techniques that we could use as an attacker inside the company. And the third point is, uh, in my opinion, the most important part of this presentation, because we will see 
some really basic action that we could use as an asker to maintain persistence on the organization okay and not only basic but at the same time it's really difficult uh, to detect for the blue team okay and the last point is the conclusion about if you really think uh, the blue team can catch us okay during an intrusion so let's start with the with the first point about the introduction um, first of all I would like to, to show a simple outline a simple overview of what the infrastructure of an organization could be like and this is more or less okay um, this part corresponds as we will see later with the possible infrastructure that is necessary for an adger okay I don't know if you see the touch yeah the mouse is here so this part is basically the infrastructure of an asker okay but all of them is about the infrastructure of the company here we can see for example the demilitarized zone with some servers like web application email servers or other corporate servers like for example vpn um, inside the network we can see a network okay normally we have so many networks not only one network because uh, the company normally is segment um, in different networks and that type of things but well this is a real simple overview so here we can see well uh, the domain controller of an active directory for example servers internally the building and other network dedicated to um, the employees okay because it's normally uh, divided into a different network and um, this type of servers could be proxies to access to the internet okay here we can have a, another similar infrastructure and I think um, because of my experience it's really common in companies that are really big and they have presence in, in many countries and many in many locations it's common that they have uh, a small infrastructure but at the same time with other domain or subdomain domain controller internal servers workstation and all the same infrastructure but in different locations and at the same time in this small and simple uh, structure of a company we could say some we could see some different uh, providers like Google Cloud Platforms uh, Amazon or Azure uh, typical providers where the company could deploy private uh, cloud okay and the last part here this icon of a building represent a provider a more traditional provider of the organization okay because it's possible that this provider and the cloud platforms too could have access internally to the network okay for some different things that we will see later okay this is a really simple overview okay normally if you work in a company or you do a penetration testing or a red team exercise normally the the network infrastructure is really more complex uh, this is only a simple overview to understand the different type of persistence that we will see later in the presentation so the first concept is about what is persistence and in my opinion it's really simple persistence refers to the um, to the concept of maintain access to the organization for a long period of time guarantee uh, the possibility of accessing the entity through additional ways and without the use of access vector detected initially uh, during the red team exercise okay so this type of actions in many cases not carried out currently is really important since the um, the security team detects the action of the red team it is simple game over okay so because of that we really need to deploy a correct infrastructure of persistence that allow us to continue access into the organization for a long period of time okay because normally this type of exercise could extend many months in in time okay 
So let's see what different could there be in the previous scenario if we deployed persistence, okay? We see this is scenario, simple, that company, okay? But at the same time, we could say, we could see this other one, but with more things. For example, in this case, we see all the different persistence that we will see uh, later in the presentation that start a reverse connection and allow us as an adver to access directly to an internal server. And we can configure persistence, for example, in providers, in workstations, in internal servers, or in um, additional infrastructure in other locations, for example, okay? One important question that we will we will see later too is that persistence is a backup, okay? Normally, the red team use the access vector, okay? Or one persistent, but the other type of persistence normally or should always be a backup, but okay, it's really really important because if you need one because we have lost access, you must decide which one and use it as an access vector from um, that moment, but always without making use of others and therefore guarantee their future use. Okay, it is really 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 important. And of course, as we will see, we could use another type of persistence, uh, more like incoming, okay, where the red team is really connected to some computers or some other type of access, like for example, Wi-Fi access, to access to the organization, okay. So this is only an example, but we could deploy more and more and more and more persistence, okay, as we will see, we could use internal server as a persistence, internal workstations, Wi-Fi, persistence on the domain controller, on the Active Directory, provider, cloud, um, private cloud, and many other locations where we can deploy persistence. And this is the question. If we configure currently that type of persistence, we could be sure that always where we can access, we could access, okay? It is really important. So, more basic concepts, really simple. Why? Well, why? Maybe it's a really, really uh, simple question. Um, because we want to maintain access to an organization for a long period of term, a long period of time, as a real attacker could do, because normally we need to simulate a real attacker. Okay. On many occasions, it is really trivial uh, to deploy persistence, as we will see later, guarantee us in a simple way to continue with intrusion at any time. Okay, the next concept, simple way, where? The simplest answer is as everywhere as you can. Typically, many teams focus on deploy persistence um, only on internal systems or internal servers. But in my opinion, it is a mistake since it limits access ways and at the same time make it easier to detect persistent to the blue team. Okay, so we will have to deploy persistent in different locations, as we will see the military system, internal server, internal workstation, internal domains, and so on. But always depending on the needs and remaining time of the exercise. If the intrusion has been achieved, for example, and there is a week left, the persistence will not be the same as if there is a month left, for example, okay? If we have only one week, maybe we don't want to spend that week deploying persistence, okay? But if we have more time, it is important to deploy some different type of persistence, okay? And guarantee that access for a long term. And the last one is when. When we need to deploy that persistence. And here again, uh, the answer as soon as 
we can do it okay it is always good to deploy a uh, persistent at different points and well it will always be a good idea to spend time deploying persistence as the intrusion progress okay and not just um, waiting for access to the internal networks or domain administration privilege because if we wait maybe we could lose access okay because of that it is really important um, when we are creating the process of intrusion um, whenever we can it's important to deploy that persistence okay but we will see here in this point so now let's see a brief summary about the most common persistent methods that are used by many red teams a, an important aspect to remark is that these techniques are practically used in any exercise and can be performed in many more ways than those shown below okay um, on the other hand the alternative techniques that will be shown later uh, in the next point are intent to be complementary and in no case a substitute uh, for the use of some types of traditional persistence okay it's important to, to have both or maybe traditional it's of course important so we are not going to talk about how to achieve persistence or how to maintain or obtain the necessary privilege but only about the ways to maintain this persistence uh, science this could give for many talk okay so let's start um, with internal servers both servers and workstations okay and um, note that the possibility of deploying persistent on both servers and workstation is important okay we need to deploy it on both type of servers because they are completely different uh, servers tend to have higher availability but it's less common that they have internet access in many cases so we can configure it but we need to modify it. and in some cases this is not the best situation uh, on the other hand we use workstation and uh, you usually have configured internet access and also uh, they um, also usually have uh, security measures and their visions are normally minor uh, than the servers for example and therefore the detection uh, capability of the blue team is less in that type of servers so normally to gain persistence on an internal system a, a reverse connection is usually established against a system owner um, or a server owner, a BPS for example, owned by an attack. Okay, the left part of the of the um, schema. So um, it is really simple because normally it's like setting a reverse SSH uh, tunnel to map different ports of the internal machine okay where we deployed persistent but in in any cases in both system it is possible to def to define the same types of connection which could be devised into the following okay so the first type of connection okay we can configure as I said um, both servers or internal workstation with reverse connection to a BPS controlled by us but we could have some different type of persistence and um, first of all direct connection uh, it is well, it consists of a direct connection to the internet which does not go through a proxy for example um, so a computer with have direct connected to to internet output so it is not common uh, but it can be found sometimes uh, the communication setup in this case uh, would be trivial and on the other hand uh, there are other options that allow direct access to the internet such as for example the use of other protocols like DNS 
uh, or other similar protocols that permit us to establish um, that reverse connection but also uh, this will require uh, tunneling through this protocol okay so this is the first possibility but normally this option uh, is common by using of this other type of protocols like DNS okay DNS DNS connection to a domain or a server uh, owned by the adger and using that connection we could establish a reverse connection but it's, a, it's not the best case because it's useless okay so the next one is more common, the use of an open proxy. Normally, HTTP proxy is uh, used for developing actions which we will be able to find as uh, the information intrusion is carried out or configured in the system, for example, development or pre production system. And well, the use of this proxy is quite simple since tool like SSH or Pellink if we use Windows system, allow us to build a, a proxy through which to pass the communication. So keep in mind that reliability is less as the um, well as they could be eliminated. Normally, this type of proxy are for pre-production environment, so it's not the best case too. And the most common and normally the type of of persistent is this to next one and well in both cases basically is where we detect internally a proxy with credential it doesn't matter if it's um, only credential or if the computer sorry the um, proxy uh, authenticate uh, with an TLM authentication or with the active directory um, well Individual authentication is performed against the Active Directory, which is the most common case. Um, it would be good to look for predictable credential, okay, or use um, or users who do not expire the password, as we will see later, okay. So because if we detect, um, for example, in in uh, an intrusion we cannot connect really to internet or we cannot detect an open proxy normally we could detect um, a proxy with credential because it could be configured in the workstation of the people so once we detect that proxy uh, we could establish a reverse connection using that proxy uh, with an SSS connection for example but of course we need to to use some different type of, of tools like for example C and TLM or Chisel for, for example okay with that tools we could use the proxy and tunneling the SSS connection okay but of course we need to to keep in mind that um, the company could have uh, another security measures like for example proxy uh, I mean a filter in the proxy um, to outgoing connection and that type of thing that we will see in the next slide okay so okay this is the fourth type of um, of connection that we could create but it's important to understand what the pers what the infrastructure that need we need to to carry out okay because if we want to deploy a traditional persistence on a workstation on, on a server and um, it doesn't matter if it's a direct connection or a connection through a proxy with authentication we could need three different type of infrastructure um from the easiest and to the more difficult um, infrastructure. The first one is basically if we, um, well, BPS with public IP. As I said, this is the simplest case where a BPS server with a public IP address is hired to receive, uh, to receive the, the connection, okay, of the persistence either direct or tunneling using other protocols which allow the connection to the internal system uh, to be established so the next possibility about the infrastructure is the domain fronting okay this solution uh, well in addition uh, to hiring servers with public IP will require um, 
by in different domain to which persistent will be pointed out okay but more or less it's the same but with one domain in front and the last one and maybe is the hardest um, option is the IP landry uh, in this case we have the possibility in addition to the previous infrastructure or having different IP addresses to which we can redirect depending on who visit the domain in question okay normally in red team exercise we could use any of them and of course depends on the security measures of the company that normally need to be analyzed um, well before we deploy persistence so um, to be carry out the persistence uh, in addition to the connection of course it will be necessary for the connection to be executed periodically for this uh, it will be possible to use among others the following techniques okay we could use and um, schedule task new services file modification or account creation okay um, one important question that I will I want to, to remark uh, in general in the in the presentation is that as less things you could modify in the company to deploy persistent is really 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 better okay because we I mean it's, it's easier okay and at the same time for the blue team it's really more complicated to detect it so uh, finally some a uh, key aspect that I really want to to remark is first this will I mean for example different IPs due to the persistence and different BPS providers it's really important because this will allow the identification of a persistent connection not to identify others that are deployed so it's really important the second one different different uh, binaries dates path that we used and saying okay because if a persistent has been detected uh, others cannot be found by simple search or research uh, of our directories okay so it's really important the third use of different outgoing proxy and internal servers if we do that for the blue team it's really more complicated to detect the other persistence that we could use we could have but we don't use okay and the last point is to try to use low privilege user and if it's possible without key outdate to internet connection okay if we need to use um, a proxy normally we with credential uh, of course we need to use user and credential so it's important to analyze the active directory and try to search and um, that type of user that could access to internet using a proxy but without a password expiration okay it's really important and in companies that really well, that have a high number of users it's more or less common to find that type of users okay but as always we need to put um, as more different as possible persistence so if we want to deploy persistent on an internal server and at the same time on a workstation maybe we could configure the server to use an open proxy for example or a proxy with credential and use a normal user and at the same time we can use a workstation in other completely different network um, that use all their different proxy with all their different user with all different credential okay as much different as we can okay it's the perfect situation so this is a small brief a small overview about how can deploy a persistent an internal server or workstation let's continue with more type of persistence the next one is public server and um, basically this type of persistent will be deployed on those uh, systems that are exposed directly on internet also uh, it is not so common but 
it is a powerful vector and as it is rarely reviewed by the blue team when they detect an internal intrusion okay so this scenario uh, consists of configure exposed systems on internet to allow access to the internal network or to carry out actions without having to establish a reverse connection okay and using public resource directly so these persistence are usually deployed initially in the event that an access vector has been detected in a device located in the, the military zone for example which allows jumping to other visible machines or servers or we already have privilege so if the infrastructure privilege has been achieved it is possible to analyze the active directory and users who can access this type of environment this type of servers to deploy resources that we can take advantage uh, of from outside the organization to continue interacting with internal servers so the good thing about uh, this type of persistence is that the system that are configured with persistent do not have any type of vulnerabilities making it more difficult for the blue team to detect them okay uh, in in my opinion the um, deploy persistent now web servers is really important okay and uh, normally servers that we do not touch during the intrusion okay but once we have good privilege on the organization it's really interesting to deploy some traditional persistence on an internal servers and workstation but at the same time take one or two computers um, in two different demilitarized zone and deploy different type of persistence uh, like as we will see here uh, for example a web shell file manager or web proxy okay uh, this are normally the main type of resource that we could deploy okay web shell if we want to interact directly with the system okay execute commands perhaps the easiest to detect due to the need to call certain process and the second one is the file manager which only allow the uploads of files since it is not necessary malicious code it is really complex to detect so this could be a really awesome uh, persistence because we could deploy traditional persistence internally but at the same time take two different servers exposed on the internet upload from the inside of the network some different type of file manager and in the case that we need to use that persistent use the file manager upload a web proxy for example and with that um well in the case of web proxy is without a doubt the most powerful since it allows using the system as a proxy through the use of php asp aspx or similar language so one of the most common maybe tools in this file is rejorge okay so in my opinion one of the best persistence uh, to deploy in a demo address zone is to take some different servers and upload a file manager and when we need to use it use the file manager and upload a web proxy or a web cell for example to re-enter uh, again into the organization so in addition to the different type of persistence uh, it is important to um, to know how to deploy them since they could range from simply uploading a file to integrating this resource uh, into other existing ones and even multiple files which would make their detection much more complex okay so here we have uh, some possibilities like as i said independent resource is like we take the file manager and direct upload the file manager to the server the integration of resource is to take one existing resource and integrate the file manager inside the resource okay my opinion is the best and the last and of course more complex is the integration with multiple resources in this case we need to put uh, sorry we need to to take 
some different resources internally and put for example the file manager in parts in some different existing resource okay okay and well as we see in the last part of the internal server persistence uh, here we have some other key aspects um, well for example in, in one hand uh, use servers that are host in the different demilitarized zone as I said if they exist of course and deploy different resource on each server okay because if the blue team detects a, a persistent on a web server and they try to find other uh, web server with the same persistent they don't find anything okay so that's really interesting more make use of different uh, names and routes or paths as well as the origins of the connection to those different resources in such a way that it's not possible to identify a, a unique IP address uh, that allow corresponding and um, correlating sorry a different persistence with the same IP address okay and well at the end as I mentioned use public server that do not necessarily have vulnerabilities and deploying certain security measures in our resource that avoid the possibility of a third party to use them okay for example if we uh, deploy a uh, reward as a, as a persistent it is really important that the reward uh, is not public to the use of anyone okay we need to put uh, a password uh, IP filtering or something like that okay it's really important okay so the next possibility about uh, deploy persistence well here we have another common possibility in which we are not going to develop a uh, much due to the amount of public information there is so in this case uh, deploy persistence in the active directory usually hints to aid in the development of internal persistence on servers uh, previously seen or generate new access uh, to the internal network from the internet such as creating a user who has permission to access via VPN for example so this is a simple uh, example okay the modification of an active directory could impact in the possibility to access for example in the cloud of Azure if we have um, a distribute uh, Active Directory or the use of different uh, type of corporate service like email or VPN okay well um, in this case is a, a small different uh, here have some examples of which in my opinion uh, the most useful and least sticking is the first the best option is to analyze the Active Directory to identify and to detect a privileged or potential usable users is the best because we don't need to um, to modify in any way the Active Directory so in my opinion is the best as I say in general the less uh, the infrastructure of an organization is modified to deploy persistent is better okay since we will have uh, less possibilities of being detected of being identified okay at the same time from this list okay as I said the first one for me is perfect and the second is the persistence in secondary internal domains maybe could be the same organization or other secondary organization and um, well this could be affected uh, because it's related to to the same as as I said okay uh, in my opinion in this case we need to analyze the active directory of this second company or second domain and try to find information that allow us to continue with intrusion in the case of there is any problem but in my opinion the um, is better than modification for example the active directory discretion discretionary access control list or access control entities as well as the modification or the creation uh, of ticket uh, like silver ticket or golden ticket or the creation of users because all of these are action that are really aggressive and maybe cause mm, the generation of some alerts and the possibility of detection of the blue team of the red team okay 
And well, the last case refers to the possibility of deploying persistent in private clouds uh, that uh, the organization or directly providers may have. Okay. Uh, it is something that lately is being more carried out. But um, in the end, it is based on identifying providers that have some type of access with the internal network of the target uh, organization and displaying persistent in them or deploy persistent in them. It is under the boldly uh, useful since it is more complex uh, for the organization to have detection and of course response capabilities in cloud environment or directly in provider networks okay so we are not going to delve into it because in the end it will be the same action as those already seen okay normally the providers uh, or company providers have internal infrastructure so if we take if we compromise directly a uh, provider and use that provider to compromise into internal network, of course, we could deploy if we have permission, of course, a uh, persistent on that provider. But it's not the most common situation. And at the end, as I said, it's the same actions. Uh, another important part is if we could access to a private cloud, for example, in Google Cloud Platform, Amazon, or Azure, for example, and that infrastructure have a direct access, for example, via VPN to internal organization, it is possible for us to try to deploy persistent on that environment because at the end, um, normally the company have more security measures internally, but in other networks, it doesn't matter if it's a provider or it's a cloud, a private cloud. It's more difficult for the blue team to, to deploy that type of security measure. And it's not common. Okay, so let's continue. And finally, we got to the part I want. Uh, here we are going to see a couple of simple actions that can allow us to maintain persistence in organization by using a situation that would rarely be reviewed by a blue team during their response to an incident okay we have to remember that when the blue team detects an incident those first hours or days and um, they carried out the most basic actions enough time for the attacker to find out but certainly not enough for the blue team to detect the action that we will see here so in many occasions, these techniques are extremely effective due to the ignorance of the way um, an ad acts for the blue team. Okay, so the first one is the predictable credential. It is uh, based on the possibility of an ad to identify the history of keys that user have had and to identify users with predictable patterns okay in the password so for example um, if a user has been identified with passwords like may 2020 june 2020 july 2020 it will be certain that in few months this user will have the password october 2020 okay it and that's a perfect persistent because it's really and rarely uh, to think about it uh, for the blue team okay so in the case the user has the ability to to access corporate services that do not have double factor indication for example VPN or uh, Wi-Fi it would be a perfect persistent which could only be avoided if the blue team force the all the users to change their password so also it will be surely to be the next or the last month okay because normally the user uh, always follow the same pattern okay so there are very common password patterns that usually mix the company name the location month and year and maybe the name of the person with that we can create some patterns and try to search that patterns so what are the steps to do this uh, they are really 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 simple i mean 
The first one is the extraction and uh, the password history hashes. Okay, could be a selective extraction. Uh, depends on the goal, of course. Um, cracking that hashes and um, normally using uh, rules with Hascat or any other tool like that, and obtain clean password. Um, the third point is the identify which user had password with patterns uh, with the last month, for example, August 2020 in this case. Uh, verified corporate service and the type of interaction that they allow you know, to, to, to understand what type of persistence we could deploy. For example, it's completely different. If we could access to uh, a mail or if we could access to a VPN, VPN is direct access, but in mail, we need to use more things like the use of ruler or something like that, okay? So it's important to understand the, um, the possibilities for the intrusion of this service. And the last one, do not use them if not necessary, okay? And never from a source that we have already used, okay? So this is one of my favorite uh, alternative persistence. The next one is the Wi-Fi networks uh, with connection. Really simple. Many times the company have Wi-Fi with password. We try to detect that, okay? So this second scenario consists of identifying during the intrusion credential to access to your organization Wi-Fi networks, okay? That are directly connected to the internet network. Of course, not BPA2 enterprise, okay? But normally BP2 PS key, okay? And are common normally in the organization. Well, try to find from the inside uh, during the analysis of internal system, the workstation of the administration, uh, administrators, or the NAS servers, okay? Try to find this information, okay? The credential of the networks, and of course, detect if that network is directly connected. If it's connected, it's perfect, okay? Because in the case of losing access to your organization, it would be only necessary to access through said Wi-Fi network and continue the intrusion to deploy more comfortable traditional persistence. If access to traditional persistence were lost, it would take a long time for the blue team to change or to think about that, uh, these keys. So it will be practically impossible to prevent the attacker for continue to enter. Okay, and here the steps Really simple, the identification of Wi-Fi network, identification of users, position through ID analysis, for example, the identification of system connected to a Wi-Fi and extraction of credential, and finally, the verification of access to these Wi-Fi networks, okay? Okay, let's, the next one, try to connect periodically to a Wi-Fi. This is quite uh, a little bit strange, uh, this third case will consist of identify system uh, usually employ laptops that are accessible through a Wi-Fi network generated by ATK. So, um, in this situation and normally by analyzing the existing position in said location, it will be possible to configure the systems that every day at a certain time they try to connect to a Wi-Fi network. When the entity, well, well, the blue team, when the entity team did so, um, we could already have a connection, being able to use internal servers, internal users in this case, that we have, okay? Any user that has been created in the, team, in the, in the system, etc. okay? Conversely, the other way around could be for the employee to raise, to, to emit an access point, but this is always something a little more complex. So it's better to configure an internal system, and normally, as I said, an employee laptop uh, of a concrete location, and configure that server to try to connect to a Wi-Fi that the adgrid creates, okay? Try it one time a day, for example, or one time a week, if we lose access to the organization, we lose uh, the other type of persistence. It's simple. We only need to um, go to that location, create the Wi-Fi, the laptop connect to our Wi-Fi, 
and in that case we can directly interact with the server okay we could uh, create a trigger for example to if detects the Wi-Fi create a local user and we could use that user okay so here we can uh, do many actions okay many many actions but it's a real interesting approach in in my opinion to really deploy persistence okay and well this point is maybe um, a little bit more different but in my opinion it could be interesting too okay uh, we see some alternative persistence but at the same time um, we can configure other type of persistence more like the extraction of information that we could use to um, create another access vector okay for example uh, the most important is the silence action okay I don't have a lot of time so I go more more run and more more fast uh, first of all silence action uh, the first one is the display of the GAL global access list um, to deploy um, a brute force attack okay so we can configure a server internally to each I don't know Monday for example send us the GAL with all the users not the password only the users it's, it's normal information it doesn't matter I mean with that information we can configure for example if we lose all the access we can configure a brute force attack trying to detect with that entire list of users if some of that user have a, a predictable password if we detect that we have a user we could use or try to use in Wi-Fi VPN email and so on more email forwarding with keywords this is real interesting and in many cases the employees use Outlook so we can configure the Outlook of, of some employees to forward some emails with a specific keywords for example key password etc okay and the third one is the uploading files to expose web servers for example imagine that you can configure an internal uh, internal system of an employee to try each month okay to put rejords on a web server and you have a list of web server you can configure uh, the laptop to try each month to use that list and each month you deploy some different web server it's like a computer internally but that computer is deploying persistence without any type of interaction you have the list so you only need to go to that web servers and use without any kind of problem okay it's really really interesting and here we have more aggressive action but I don't uh, explain in detail for example credential extraction and forwarding is like the first of silent action but of course more aggressive we can try to um, well extract credential and send it out more the modification of files of office office files in, in repositories in NAS for example and put malicious macros okay we can create triggers and well as the same as web servers as said the third one and uh, the deploy of the deployment of dot scf files okay that allow us to to obtain uh, maybe keys or hashes for the employees and the last one the modification of dot l and key files okay but of course all this action could be programmed or used with vectors like one previously exposed but this is only the imagination is the limit here okay so the last part because I don't have enough time uh, do you think you catch me this is the question as it has been seen we have shown only some examples but the limit as I said is imagination especially for these alternative vectors to create persistent on an organization and um, with all of this do you think I mean it is really possible um, for a blue team to identify all the access path or the persistence of, of an attacker of course um, in my opinion keep in mind that it's not necessary uh, to display all the type of persistence seen but also it's it's important to know that 
you normally need to deploy enough to guarantee access to your organization, as we said before. It's completely different if we have one week or one month, okay? We need to deploy persistence with mind. Okay, so here is like the aspect of Blue Team, but the truth is that as we will see, and as we said, have said, said before, the blue team normally has to give a first response to an incident that is necessary, insufficient. This can always allow the attacker to detect the drop in persistence and therefore time to access and configure others. It doesn't matter, we have the blue team and the blue team could detect an attack but it's really, really, really difficult for a blue team being able to detect all the different persistence if we follow the next guidelines okay really 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 simple guidelines but at the same time really effective multiple type of persistence active in an organization restrict the use of public assets of course if we put persistent on a web server it's important to protect it monitoring every persistence detection and action if we if we detect uh, that a persistent drops, it's important to use that uh, another persistent, go into the organization inside the network and try to put some other different uh, persistent to maintain access continuously, okay? So, redeploy in case of loss. More, avoid internal notification every time is one of the most important aspects during a red team exercise. Try to avoid internal notification. Different destinations. I mean, you need to put in the configuration of each persistence connect to a different server. Using that, if the blue team detects one persistent, analyze the system, they cannot correlate with other persistence. Always, if the IP where we connected is different. At the same time, different internal locations. Don't try to configure every persistent in the same network. Use different networks, different type of computers, different paths, different binaries, every different as you can, okay? Date and resource change. Normally, if you, for example, in the persistence, if you want to persist in a web server and you upload a resource, it's important to change, for example, the date of the resource to be the same or less as in the same resource in the same path, okay? It's important. And this is the next one, camouflage on existing resource. As we said, uh, one possibility is not only to upload the persistent, it doesn't matter if it's a resource or it's a web shell or it doesn't matter. You could upload directly, but you can camouflage that uh, resource integrating in another existing resource and it's really important. And the last two is do not relate or interact between persistence. It's really important if you want to avoid the detection of your persistence internally, okay? Persistent infrastructure. And the last one, and it's really, really important, maintain persistence as a backup, always. Okay, normally, in my experience, we configure three, four persistent, completely different, uh, for example, one in a web server or in an internal server on a other alternative persistence like predictable user with credential. Okay, it's important to have really different type of persistence, but at the same time, uh, maintain that persistence as a backup. You only use uh, the access vector. If the access vector detects, you need to use one persistence, but keep the others as a backup. Okay, it's really important. So, uh, the same structure as we see, how can you really catch me? If you do that, it's practically impossible for the blue team to detect, okay? If we deploy persistent, follow the guidelines, with different user and locations internally, with different origins and different suppliers, okay? Programming them differently and using different techniques and also a different time to avoid locks and possible correlation would a blue team really be able to detect all of them a kick us before we could access and continue to deploy more persistent in my opinion and experience now it's impossible okay if we deploy persistence um, on servers and internally well it is like an itra okay um, 
it's like a this a symbol of Itra. <laughs> when the blue team could uh, could off ahead, we only have to re-enter and deploy two more to continue guaranteeing access. And for the blue team, it's impossible to go faster than that than us. Okay. And that's it. Uh, command that soon I will publish a tool that helps in the development of all these type of persistence. And that's all. Thank you all. Thank you all of you. I hope you like it and enjoy uh, the remain talks of the conference. And of course, thanks to the organization for the opportunity. Okay. And that's all. See you soon. Bye.